Okay. 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 Hello, hello, hello. Happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to your Lane Talk Show with Coach Trish Hanna. It's your girl, Trish Hanna. <laughs> uh, before I start, Tony, did did you watch the race with Shawnee this weekend? No. No? No. What? You're an Obamian. You can't be serious. <laughs> no, I no. have to take a moment to salute Shawnee <laughs> Ubo, Miller Ubo, mm -hmm. for winning the 400 meters at the World Athletics Championship. I heard a clip from it, though. Our Bahamian <laughs> women are out there, and we are making it happen. I am proud to be Bahamian, Tony. I know, but you Bahamas to the world. I was looking for some Bahamians last night because I watched a whole lot of it last night. And I saw one Bahamian. Who? In the decathlon. M Mullings. I didn't watch Mullings, that. Yeah. 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 Tony. Well, anyway, guess what? We're gonna have a write-up. I'm most certain we're gonna have a write-up tomorrow in, in the Nassau Guardian. So you have an mm -hmm. opportunity to read up on that. And Tony, you need to go on YouTube or go on Facebook or something and try to look up the, the race. Cool. Okay, because she was a <laughs> that's how she was, all right. Um, but let's get into the show. Now we're talking serious, I got from serious grace. <laughs> According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, it is currently estimated that one in five women have a mental health diagnosis. Depression is the most commonly diagnosed mental illness in, in women, with twice as many women experiencing depression than men. Now, over a quarter of young women aged between 16 to 24 years old report having a common mental health problem in any given week. This compares to 17% of adults, and this number is increasing. Your Lane Talk Show was created to empower, educate, and encourage women of all ages, and today we are going to be discussing our mental health. Your Lane, episode 12, entitled, Help! I feel like I'm having a mental breakdown. It's brought to you by <laughs> Johnson & Johnson, distributed by Lowe's Wholesale. Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John's Shoe Store and Accessories, Family Medicine Center, Hershey's, distributed by Asa H. Pritchard, National Workers Cooperative Credit Union, and La Fest 2022. Wise Guy Entertainment and the Beam Agency, in association with Tropical Gyros, present the 15th annual La Fest. Laugh Now, Cry Later, live at Fusion Superplex, starring your headliner, fresh off tour with D.L. Hughley, backed by popular demand, Bodacious. Mm. Feature comedian Cisco Duran, also appearing the 242's funniest. I don't think they are the funniest, but I think that they are funny. That's Quay. That's my opinion. Don't come for me. That's Quay, <laughs> BJ, and Sharper. And I say, I think that Sawyer Boy is the funniest Bahamian comedian, but I mean, that's just me. All right, thanks. Um, all hosted by the Bahamian King of Comedy, Naughty. Two big shows, Friday, July 29th, and Saturday, July 30th at Fusion Superplex. General admission is $40, and VIP is $60. I heard that is very limited for those who want to get VIP. You have to check to see if it's still available. Tickets are on sale at Fusion Superplex. I, meaning your lane with Coach Trina, Trish Hanna. Jesus, I'm messing up my name. <laughs> Have two tickets to give away for La Fest. Two. Two tickets. Well, actually four, because last week I told the listening audience to call in and look in the mirror. That's all they had to do. They had one job. Look in the mirror and say what you see when you see yourself. And 
I guess we were a little shy last week. So I'm going to bring that question back along with another question. Since we're talking about mental health, all you have to do is call in and tell us why mental health is important to you. So there are four tickets that I'm giving away today. Call in, be my second and my third caller if you want. Tell me why is mental health important to you? Or you can tell me when you look in the mirror, what do you see? The number to call is 328-8164. I'm gonna give you two seconds to go find a pen and pencil and a paper, 328-8164. Now, one thing about laughing and the reason why I'm happy that Laugh Facts is happening this weekend is because when we laugh, we release good hormones, feel good hormones called endorphins. And they help us tremendously with stress. You don't have to worry about being intoxicated when you laugh. So it's much safer than alcohol and drugs. My predictions of emotions today for this episode are 95% serious aha moments, 0% laughter, 5% teardrops. They can be tears of joy because you want to do it on the speaker? Mm -hmm. They can be tears of joy because of knowledge released. They could be tears because of the testimony shared today. I can't wait. Or <laughs> something may resonate with you and cause you to feel emotional today. So today is heavy, but it is needed. And guess what? I think we have a caller. Hello, caller. Welcome to your lane talk show. Hello, caller. Welcome to your lane talk show. Hi. To have a mental, um, of the mental, yeah, mental health. Yes, sir. Yeah. Use, uh, Listen up, ladies, because we have a male mm -hmm. calling our mm -hmm. talk show <laughs> telling us why he thinks that it's important for us to have mental health. Go on, sir. Well, um, first of all, it it it, it um, relieves your body from sickness. I think, I think, I mean, you know, when you're stressed, you bring on sickness to your body, you know, yeah. and I don't want to go down, so I, I tend not to be stressed. Right. So you try not to, you try to alleviate all the stress that you possibly can. You have any kids? I do, I, I have um, four boys. Four boys. What's, wow. what's the youngest? Who? What, how old is the youngest child? The youngest is... Eight going on sixteen. Oh, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pray your strength in the Lord. But because you're a male caller, I just have to do it. I can't. Yeah. You you know about Laugh Fest? Yes, I know. About I gotta Fest. make sure you go to Laugh Fest. Who? I ain't gonna get you in trouble if I ask you. You taking a? Don't ask you that, eh? Yeah, yeah. I can ask you. Oh, gee. <laughs> Man, they ain't had it because it's going through the thing. It's going through the thing. They ain't had it properly. If I ask him who he bring in, it can cause some mental stress. And I don't want that because that, that would be, you know, that's the, that's not, let's Just not do that then. So, so I'm going to give you your tickets and hang on. We're going to tell you how you're going to get it. Okay. Thanks so much for calling. God bless you. Okay. So <laughs> moving right along. Guess what? So get, uh, no, he's gonna we're live right now. So I'll tell him to keep on keep on holding until we get on a break. What's gonna happen is <laughs> sorry, sir. What's gonna happen is so this mail caller ladies took two of your tickets. So you got two more tickets left. We have two more tickets left. And we also have a book by Dr. Joseph. I don't know if you guys heard about that, but it's 106 myths about sex that's an awesome 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 book so you have an opportunity to win that as well so thank you to our male caller for tuning in ladies mind y'all gotta stuff it up y'all gotta be like <laughs> shawnee and run <laughs> and your call before the males call in all right so you can be view us now on facebook on your lane live coaching page or star 106 fm's facebook page or you can listen to us on channel 976 on faith on cable you can do the past shows on YouTube. Look up Coach Trishana if you can. And you can view the episodes from what episode one straight up to last week's episode 12. It's made available for you. Please like and subscribe. I'm inviting my audience, even those who may not have the answer to my two questions that I asked, if by any chance you want to call in to express how you feel, express maybe something that, that someone may have said, and you say, okay, well, yeah, me too. I've experienced this too. 
or maybe you just want to um, ask a question for those who are here and then of course Dr. Gia when she arrives the number is still 3288164 write it down because you might need it 3288164 now because they've been waiting so patiently. <laughs> Joining us today in this first segment of Your Lane are two beautiful women who are courageous enough to share their <laughs> stories with me and you all, okay? And how they have overcome depression. I will ask them to both to introduce themselves and say, just mention one or two small little details about yourself. Let's start here. Hello, hello. Thank you, Trishon, for inviting me. My name is Madison Cawley. I am a wife, a mother of three beautiful, precious little ones. And I'm also a kindergarten teacher, which I absolutely love. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Trishon. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is Tanisha Euphemia, and I am a administrator by profession, but I am also a life coach, trauma coach, and counselor. Are you? Yeah. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the right show. Yes, I am. All right. And so listen, ladies, we're going to get straight to it because I want to make sure that you, everyone gets, because people come in here just to hear what you have to say mm -hmm. and hear what Dr. Mm -hmm. G has to say. But it's nothing like someone who's already experienced it and able to come out and share how they've been what they've been through and how they came out of it. Mm -hmm. So my first question to you all is like, what? Well, first of all, let's talk about your depression first. Talk mm -hmm. about what type of depression you had and um, whatever it is that you want person mm -hmm. to know. And then I guess I'll ask my questions from there. All right. Well, I experienced postpartum. And this is Madison. Yes, this is Madison. Mm -hmm. And I experienced postpartum depression with my first baby. And that was about, well, he just turned eight. So still pretty fresh. <laughs> Uh, this is Tanisha. Um, for me, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder, um, along with um, general anxiety disorder and suicidal ideation. And that was in 2010, my mm. first diagnosis. And then I was re-diagnosed in 2019 when I had a relapse. Yeah. This uh, may be a long I, time. I, I, I don't know how to do it. I have my tissue. I don't know. <laughs> Listen, did I do I, did my, I do my prediction? I yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. I'm going to say we're crying. 5%. I think you said 5%. I think that I, I have to increase that I thought that was pretty low. <laughs> All right. That was very low. Let's, let's, let me talk about it. Heavy. Talk about mm -hmm. this happened eight years ago. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Okay. So I actually wasn't sure or didn't know for certain mm -hmm. what I was experiencing. So my mom and my husband actually was like, you know what? I think something is a little off here. Mm -hmm. And it was just hard connecting with the baby. You know, you watch movies and you see videos and everybody's posting about when the baby comes out and they rest the baby on your chest and you just have this oh, loving bonding mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that. So I was like, okay, well, I guess it'll come later. Mm -hmm. And then I was big on breastfeeding. I only wanted to breastfeed mm -hmm. my baby and that didn't work. And the nurse she told me in the hospital because latching, I didn't know the whole process mm -hmm. of latching. Mm -hmm. So she said in the hospital, she was like, you can cause this baby have gas, man. You honey, I don't want to get this child no formula. So I kept that in the back of my mind and he did end up having gas. So I was like, oh goodness gracious, what I do to my child? So I blame myself for that. And then it, breastfeeding was hard. Of breastfeeding was hard and I didn't expect it to be that hard. Mm -hmm. So that was another challenge mm -hmm. and i mean a great challenge because again i'm, I'm reading the book and I'm, I'm doing everything the books say to do mm -hmm. and i'm watching the videos and everybody have a tutorial and you know their story and i was expecting my story to be like theirs mm -hmm. you know so that was hard and i i felt like he would cry with me i felt like if my husband held him he'll stop crying my mommy you know hold him he's okay but the minute i touch him eh? Mm -hmm. He's crying I, and I can't, I can't comfort him. I'm not connecting with him. I can't soothe him. And I was just like, oh my goodness, what is this? So I didn't want to be bothered. I just didn't want to be bothered. And my husband, one time he was leaving and he said to my mom privately, I didn't know until after mm -hmm. he was like, I need you to watch her because I don't want her to hurt the baby. Mm -hmm. And when they told me that after the fact, I was like, what? You all really thought I was going to, you know, but they were outside looking in right so they saw things i didn't see yeah. and i was like oh my goodness wow so what is now what is this why do i feel this way what 
what is causing this? You know, so it, that was like, wow. Madison, <laughs> Madison I know it don't, it don't take me much. It don't. It don't. My thing is this, Madison. Okay, so when you were in the hospital mm -hmm. and you said that the nurse brought the baby to you and you and and placed the baby on your chest and you didn't feel it, what is it that you were expecting to feel? I was expecting butterflies and and goosebumps. I was expecting to instantly fall in love. Right now. Because that's what I saw. Right. That's what I saw. Like right away, the mommy's just like, oh. Mm -hmm. And right away, I was just like, this baby smell funny. Oh, <laughs> like what? What? You know, like oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Now, I, you know, I I love him mm -hmm. and I wanted to protect him, but I didn't fall in love right away. Yeah. Is we had to. I had to grow with him and mm -hmm. and learn to love him. Mm -hmm. And I was. He's crying all the time. Why is he crying so much? What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. I gave him call, like I caused him to be gassy. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, this baby hates me. You know, these nurses have to be a little bit more yes. sensitive, especially for first time yes. moms. Yeah. I yes. mean, they have to, they have to, I don't know what's, they in the wrong profession and they feel as if they could just talk mm -hmm. to mothers any kind of how and all these different things. Like, I've had my experience too um, with nurses, mm -hmm. you know, but we're not going to talk about that no. today. <laughs> but you got to be sensitive. Yes. You got to be able yes. to know, you know. Yes. And then with my situation, Madison, the last, the last button on Abraham. <laughs> Let me speak in an atmosphere now. Say it loud. Ain't no more turn come in from us. All right. But um, my last child, I had a little, it wasn't as severe. Yeah. But she only latched on for about, if a month, if oh. a month. Okay. And she did it. And I felt rejected. Mm -hmm. So I sensed mm -hmm. rejection from her. And I felt, and I, I was depressed as mm -hmm. well. Now, when you use the term, maybe it, maybe that may sound too severe, mm -hmm. but I no. felt some kind of way and I never shared it with anyone. Yes. I did not. I was mm -hmm. embarrassed because I was like, mm. why isn't she clutching on, on, to, clutching yes. on to me? Um, what's going on? Is something wrong with me? Right. And this is actually the third child. You would think that this would You're happen. You're a pro by now. <laughs> right. I'm the third one. I know everything. You know, I can, I can deliver my right, child by right, now. Right, right, right. You know, and I felt it. And yeah. every time when I tried to come, you know, to bring her closer to me, she just she wouldn't take doing it. it. And she would just like, Go back and so I, I never even went to my gynecologist and explained mm. the situation because maybe it may, may have been something that I could have mm. done, but because I was like, Man, you know, I don't want to go through this, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want, you to don't tell want people to know, I don't want people to know, mm -hmm. and so I just I decided to um pump, okay, and that worked a little. And then after a while, she she got the formula, the formula. which I was also I didn't have a choice because it started to dry up anyway, okay, so it was it was a little, yeah, you know, trauma yeah. for me as well. But for you, the fact that he wasn't, you weren't bonding. At mm -hmm. what point did you realize that, hey, I need to do something about this? Again, my <laughs> husband is a big factor of this story. Mm -hmm. So again, he was like, he just, he just came out and he said, and he's like, you need to come up out of this. Wow. And at the time I was like, bro, how you talking to me like this? You know, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm, I feel some type of way right mm -hmm. now. You just telling me come up out of this. Mm -hmm. But I know it was coming out of a place of love. So I said to myself, and I was like, you know what? He's he's right. Mm -hmm. I don't like what he said, but it's true. Mm -hmm. I do need to come up out of this. Mm -hmm. So I prayed. I, I held the baby in my hand and I looked at him. And I I talked with him a little bit too. I was mm -hmm. like, now nah, come on, buddy, you gotta help me out here. Mm -hmm. I said, I trying. I don't know, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I thought I was ready. Mm -hmm. I I took you know, the theory part of it, but this practical, I'm failing, but I need you to help me. Mm -hmm. uh, now, of course, you know, he's a baby, he doesn't understand, but it helped me. Mm -hmm. It helped me connect with him. And I prayed and I said, Lord, you have to hold my hand mm -hmm. and you have to guide me through this. And to be honest, I mean, it sounds cliche, but I I felt a weight lifted. No, girl, there are no cliches. <laughs> I, I felt God. it. I uh -huh. felt it. And it wasn't smooth sailing after that, but it was it was a little easier. easier. I was easier with, with myself. I wasn't so hard on myself. Yeah. I was like, you know what? This is my first one. And I have I had a lot of help. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of help my between my mommy and my husband. Mm -hmm. I mean a lot of help. Support was there. Support was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Support was there. So mommy would she, instead of her asking, you want me to hold him? She'll say, no, I mean, instead of saying, let me hold him for you, she'll mm -hmm. say, you okay? You want me to hold him? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you you want to hold him, huh? Mm -hmm. So she was there. She was very hands-on. My husband was very hands-on. So that that's how I, I overcame that. Thank God for mama. Thank, Thank God. Because <laughs> it ain't nothing like when you 
you know, you're doing things alone. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for those who I listen. Alone. I wonder, I was like, how do single women do this? Because this is hard. This is hard. This is, is hard. Oh, I was God. like, respect to them. I experienced the same thing. I thank God for the support of other moms. Mm -hmm. They helped me so much. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. Did you go through things? Yeah. Ooh, I got it. Good. I got it. Okay, I didn't make sure you're straight. But that postpartum is a serious thing. Yes. That's a serious thing. Yes. And the, because, especially with the first time moms, you could be, I don't care, first time, you can be on your sixth child. Yeah. It, it happens. It, it happens. Because I didn't think it would have happened to me on baby number three. Right. Okay. Right. And I and I and I went through it alone because I felt as if I, I. You didn't talk about it. I didn't it. want, I didn't yeah. even speak to my husband about it. No. No. And that's not wow. that's right. Yeah. And I didn't tell. I just was like, I tried to make it. Yeah. Work. Yeah. I tried to do it on my own. Yeah. I prayed too. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Tanisha, let's hear about you. Let's hear about your story. Start from the beginning. How did mm -hmm. this come about? <laughs> wow. Um, well, in 2010, um, I was on my job. And I actively was a cutter. A lot of people didn't know. Yeah. So for me to deal with a lot of things, because backtracking, I grew up in a very um, unhealthy home environment, a very abusive home environment. And as a teen teenager, went through so many different traumas. So I was a person who had to struggle with a lot of complex trauma. I won't go into all mm -hmm. of them. But um, as a result, my coping mechanism was to cut. So I cut to deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. And in 2010, I was on my job. And my boss at the time, um, I was in the office. And I guess I didn't wrap that good that day. And saw the blood on my blouse mm -hmm. and had a conversation. And I, up to daylight today, I always say he's the best boss I ever mm -hmm. had. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. um, because he surely um, ensured that I went to get checked. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got my first diagnosis in 2010. Mm -hmm. And I was diagnosed with clinical depression. I didn't tell anybody. I, being active in ministry and in church and stuff mm -hmm. like that, yeah. I just tried yeah. to, <laughs> you know, tug it out because it wasn't something that the church talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know who I could go to and talk about it. Yeah. I didn't feel as though anybody could have understand what I was going through because I didn't even understand mm -hmm. what I was going through in the sense of like today I wake up and okay, I'm. I'm okay, I could go. And mm. then tomorrow comes and it's like, I don't even know how to get up out of bed. And I don't know how to explain that to people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's nothing that is triggering it really. It just happens. And I didn't know how to express that. So I did that for a very long time, just silently, um, ended up getting married and just dealing with all these stuff, very silent. Mm -hmm. um, my marriage had situations that just triggered it in marriage, I ended up having three miscarriages. Mm -hmm. So I think all of that just came as a tsunami at mm -hmm. one point. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, I just couldn't keep the lid on anymore. And that's when I had a relapse and I tried to take my life. Um, thank God mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for angels that he have. My best friend was in church and she heard my voice. She just heard the voice say, go to me. Wow. And the moment I was about to cut my wrist, she called my phone and showed up. She was wow. at my door. And I had to make a decision on the 14th of January, 2019, which way I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. And I, I made the decision to get help. It was the first time I said I needed help because okay. I was always the strong one. Everybody in my family circles around me always mm -hmm. look to me so this was the time i had to become weak and i said i needed help uh, as a result i went away i didn't want to get help here because of the stigma mm -hmm. um so i decided to go away and i went away i got treated um was placed on meds again and had to return but it didn't happen until i had to surround myself with a support system so whilst i was away they had to make sure that a support system was developed here. That means that the people where I'm going to be living, mm -hmm. you know, I had to get a psychiatrist. I had to get a therapist. Mm -hmm. I had to put things in place in order to come back home. So I came back and all of that in place. And that's when the journey began. Mm -hmm. um, and I say journey because 
it was not easy. Um, many days, I, I just didn't, I didn't have the energy to do anything. I mean, this was my door and this is my bed and I'm seeing the doorknob, mm -hmm. but I don't have the energy to roll out of bed mm -hmm. and get up and do something. So sometimes I'm in bed for days. I didn't bathe. I didn't eat. Mm -hmm. You know, my best friend had to deal with all of that sense. Um, just to take a bath, it was hard because one of the things I developed struggling with depression was chronic pain. Yeah. So just the, the water on my skin hurt because mm -hmm. my body was always constantly mm -hmm. in pain. So um, I was on meds. And I just had to start doing the work. Um, so I made sure I did all my psych check-ins, all my therapy sessions, um, taking the medication, which was hard because a lot of people don't know sometimes at first the medication is rough. Your body has to get adjusted mm -hmm. to it. So it's not so pleasant in the beginning yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> until your body gets used to it. But the good thing is fast forward. Um, in 2020, when the pandemic was so heightened, mm -hmm. Um, my psychiatrist didn't take any of her patients off of meds because this is an isolation yeah, period, yeah, yeah. you know? But by the grace of God, I was the only patient who came off of medication wow. in June, 2020. Wow. So June 13, 2020 was the last day that I took medication. And today, um, I'm, I'm excited that I, I know how to live with. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. I say to people, I live with it mm -hmm. um, in the sense of I have my moments, you know, where it still comes. Um, one of the things I realized I developed in the process was something called PMDD. Mm -hmm. So this is premenstrual depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times around that cycle, mm -hmm. my cycle in the month, I would have this episode where I just like two mm -hmm. or three days, I'm just like completely low. You know, and it's not, there's literally mm -hmm. nothing, you know, yeah. it's just, it just happens. And yeah. sometimes it don't happen. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not every month, yeah. but sometimes it do. But what happens is in the process, I learn to just see my patterns and different things. And I learn to implement things into place to be able to deal with it. Yeah. Someone said, awesome. wow, it's so sad that folks feel better, even safer going abroad mm -hmm. for mental health, but it's a reality. And yeah. it's only because of the stigma that we have here that, oh, she must be crazy. She's yeah. crazy. You know what I mean? And she's talking about, people are talking about women, old people in general, but women yeah. because, you know, they're going through things or she can't handle it. When when we tell someone, um, you know, we're, we're down or something's not right or I'm depressed, you know, the first thing they say is, girl, go breathe. Mm -hmm. You know, they brush you off. Mm -hmm. So I can actually see why you actually took the time to say, let me pack up and go mm -hmm. elsewhere. Yeah. I, I think totally for me, the reason why, and it, I did my research, mm -hmm. you know, and, and nothing against anybody, but Sandalyn's the, just the, like you were talking about the nurses. Mm -hmm. I, I feel as though the, there's persons there who have a job, but they don't really understand their right, job. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so for me, it was like I'm I needed to un make sure that I'm going into a place where people truly understand what I'm dealing yeah, with and they're equipped yeah, to deal yeah. with and who is gonna take the time because dealing with someone with a mental illness is not easy. No. It is totally not easy. The first time I checked into the psych ward away, the first three days I locked myself in my room. I mean, the room was like half of this. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have enough a lot of that space, one little bed. And I refused to come out. I didn't mm -hmm. go to any breakfast, group mm -hmm. sessions, anything. But there's this one nurse named Anne. Mm -hmm. She came in my room every day. And she just would always say, just good morning. Yeah. You know, you sure you don't want to bathe today? And if I say no, she's like, okay, okay. I'll check back on you. Mm -hmm. And she would come and check. It was never a pressure. She didn't talk down to me. It's yeah. and it was just yeah. she cared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to care for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. When you can be so stink, because sometimes in those places you say and you do things that you don't really mean. Right. And you could be hurtful to somebody. Mm -hmm. But to have someone care like just care yeah. of the fact that okay it's fine if you don't want to do it you know and be able and willing to accept that yeah. you know that opened the door for me like to be like okay 
I guess it's sometime I have to come out of this room <laughs> if I don't want to live here forever. Yeah. But that that was the reason for me. I didn't feel from my research mm -hmm. that the persons here and the system here would have done any help yeah. for me. Yeah. I don't I don't want to bash the system here. Yeah, right? I don't want to but either. I think but everyone can read between the lines yeah. of what yeah. you're saying. Mm -hmm. And can I also say that love is a spirit. When when you could show someone love. And whatever it is that they're going through mm -hmm. can be broken because mm -hmm. of your, your love, love showing yep. towards them, the mm -hmm. kindness, the gentleness, the, you know, all these other um, attributes that love carries. Yeah. And and thank you, Nurse Anne. We have to find you. Yes. <laughs> she said <laughs> Sibley Memorial in okay. Washington. Same, same. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sibley yeah. Memorial Hospital. Okay. Yes. But, uh, right in, in Washington. Washington. Yeah. Okay, we got to awesome. find Nurse Anne. <laughs> Because it's people like them. Yeah. And yeah. I guess it's people like those who other persons will never forget. No, yes. I would so never they forget. Gave you saw her face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> her face you know just lit right off. And she no, I, I would so, never forget mm -hmm. her. Ladies, let me ask you. Let me just ask both of you. Mm -hmm. What was going through your mind as you were literally going through this process? Let me ask Madison first. Worst, I, worst thought. Worst thought? Yeah. This baby hates me. And I'm a terrible mother. Just horrible. This is what I waited for. This is what I prayed for. And now look, failing. Worst, worst thought for you. There's no reason. Mm -hmm. This is it. Like life don't make no sense. I just need to end it. There's literally no purpose for me to be here. Yeah. Yeah. That was the worst thought in my head. Do you know that women have these thoughts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every yeah. single day, yeah. whether their husbands abuse them, mm -hmm. their husbands mm -hmm. are cheating on them, mm -hmm. whether their boyfriends who propose to them or fiancés just left them, um, mm -hmm. whether they did not get the job, the, the rejection that mm -hmm. they encounter, um, they trying to do something in life, but then things aren't working out. Yeah. And so yeah. they feel as if what's the point of me continuing on if all the doors just keep on closing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they get this feeling of, why am I here? Yeah. What's the reason? What's the reason? Mm -hmm. For those who are suffering um, postpartum, you know, for whatever reason, Madison, I'm going to let you talk to mm -hmm. them um, and tell me how is it that, how could you speak to them? How would you be able to minister to someone listening right now that is presently going through I something that they them, don't even know? Right. They, got, they can't yeah. put a name yeah. on it, but they know that yeah. they have this feeling. It, it is hard to put a name on it, but I would just tell them, listen, just hold on. Just one more day. One more day. That's that's how I had to think about it. I was like, okay, you know what? Let me get through today. And let me just try my best. Okay, he's crying now. Okay, it's okay. I can't comfort him. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. He stopped. Let me try again tomorrow. One more day. Hold on. Just one more day. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you say it. But let's take a break first. And then when we come back, we'll actually make sure both of you mm -hmm. can really and what you think persons need to hear okay. um, from you all. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take a break. Today, I understand okay. these lessons. I'm going to call them like, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. horrible. Even now, as I deal with I persons who go through it. Yeah. Um, oh, Hello to my Facebook listeners and viewers. Hi there. We have with me, for those who are just coming in, thank you for joining us today. We have with me Madison, Carly, and Tanisha. Euphemia. Euphemia. <laughs> um, I love her. Names, man. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And for those who have been asking questions and making comments throughout, um, go right ahead. Let's, we're going to read a few of them. Um, Tony, if you could put up some. some yeah, do them, because my own is doing a little. Okay, so uh, Dr. G is in. Dr. Gia is in the building, um, so we're going to wait on her. To, Gia, you can come on up um, right after we get to Nisha and Madison's um, last words. We'll have Gia in. Dr. Gia. Dr. Gia. <laughs> um, okay, but thank you, those who are tuning in via Facebook. So, ladies, because we're still on. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, thank you. Thank you for sharing. I need to increase that percentage for the, the tail dragon. Five percent is just too low. I was not supposed to cry today. No one's supposed to cry. Okay, but I'm grateful for it because this is what is needed. Yes. Yeah. This is what is needed. Yes. Someone says, "I'm so glad we are having this discussion." Yes. I need glasses. 
It's critical that we expose <laughs> these issues to help those who are struggling the most. You are not alone. We are yes. here for you. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And it's so good to know when you have a support system. Mm -hmm. Madison had a support system, y'all. Um, Tanisha had a support system mm -hmm. here. And it had to take her. Anyway, I, I want to discuss that on air because I want to talk about how we like to hold things in mm -hmm. and don't tell nobody. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until you were suffering alone. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until you actually said, look, I For nine know. years. Yeah. Okay. So wow. the, nine years? Wow. Yeah, because I was diagnosed in 2010 and I never really said yeah. anything until 2019. Right. So yeah. when we get on air, I want you to talk to those people who want to suffer, well, not want to, but they're suffering in silence mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to talk to them right after. So people are hearing your conversations. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't dig in your nose. <laughs> Just... oh, goodness. You know, I was telling her, I totally understand like, mm -hmm. why she wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, no. I, I just, yeah. And then because, like I said, I was in ministry and people know you mm -hmm. and stuff like that. <laughs> So I was like, I, I can't do it here. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would have made it out. I think some persons think too, she running out. It ain't even yeah, serious. it ain't that serious. Yeah, it ain't you know, serious they well, to Go be great. honest with you, I, yeah. did, I did yeah. have that a lot from I, persons I'm you. in 2019 when they found out. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, oh, we just need to pray. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and then they're like, I just love my best friend though. Because yeah. my best friend, she was like, okay, if she just need to pray, you can pray it away. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have exactly. the power so much. You can pray it away. I mean, prayer has yeah. its place, you know, we're not down. No. No, 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 not down. But I think prayer, people but... miss that we are holistic yeah. beings, yes. meaning that we're spirit, body, and soul. Yes. So it's not you just about your all. spirit uh, being fed all the time. You have to make sure physically. Yes. I always tell people if something is wrong with you physically, you go to the doctor. Yeah. So if something so is why? wrong with you mentally, emotionally, why or not? your soul doesn't feel right, why do you feel it's wrong to go to a therapist? Yes. Mm hmm. Listen, I love my therapist. Yeah. Mm -mm. And stop it. Local? Yes, yes. Good. Yes. Good. Well, hopefully conversations like this would cause persons yeah. 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 to be more aware and sensitive. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't live holistically. No. And I, I realize that's the main problem. No. You know, a lot of people do not live holistically. No. So... Strong. I get that a lot. <laughs> and she She's said, strong. I'm strong. I said, I do get yeah, that a lot. Yeah, um, but I always strong. tell people, it's, it's just great. It is. Oh, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying not to. It's okay. <laughs> Welcome back. For those who are just joining us, we have with us in the studio Tanisha Longley. And you can Madison use that Connie. name. That's been one. That's up her other name. Um, but these ladies are strong and they are just resilient and they are courageous and they are kind. And, you know, and they are just here because they love you. They love they want to be able to help someone else who may be going through the same situation that they've been going through. Or better yet, someone who may be going through things that they may not have been mm -hmm. going through, but they're here to share. So you know someone who may be going through it, so you could talk to them yeah. yourself. And so just before we went on our break, we had um, Madison that said, you know, listen, just, just hold on, just one, hold more on day. one more day. One more day to those who may be crying, those mm -hmm. who in there, the child's nursery, the baby's nursery, and they in the corner. I can just visualize this right now. In okay. The, corner, mm -hmm. the nursery just crying <laughs> on the floor, crying. It's okay. Mm -hmm. The baby is crying. You and the baby could cry at the same time. That's it's right. okay. And after you don't wipe your tears, go get to pick the baby up and mm -hmm. just hold her yeah. or hold him tight and just let him or her know that mm -hmm. you love them. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you love them. Mm -hmm. And for those who, 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 you know, who have a relationship with the father. You know, you could speak to him as yes. well. I need help. Yes. Yes. All you have to say is, I need help. Yes. Because yes. if you call on to me, I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not of. Yes. He will give you the wisdom as a mother to con to be able to keep your child yes, and to know will. what to do. And he's going to bring to you angels yeah. that will help you um, to, to you know, give you wisdom as well to know how to deal with your child. I didn't come on here to preach. That's all right. Yeah. The show. That's but all I have right. to give That's it okay. Yes. All right. Listen to right. Me. So let's go with Tanisha. Can you speak mm -hmm. to us to, to persons who, in your situations, who may be suffering silently? 
Okay, the first thing I would say definitely to someone who is suffering silently is you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people and the devil, and I have to say that's what it is, he plays with our thoughts to yes. make us feel like I'm the only person yes. going through yes. this. And not until I was on a psych ward, I realized, oh, hi. It, friend. hi. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, we, we're here like, oh, you're diagnosed with that too. Like, you know, yeah. everybody, what you in here for? Yeah. Oh, so it's not me. So <laughs> the first thing I would say is to know that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Don't sit with those thoughts and that tell you that you're alone. You're the only one, mm -hmm. you know, going through this. And the second thing I would say, it's a mantra that I developed from mm -hmm. my, my pastor is truth over feelings. Yeah. Mm. And I learned that and I live with it dealer. What do I say truth over feelings is that we feel a certain thing, but sometimes you have to walk through and talk through those feelings right. to figure mm. out if it's true. Right. Mm. You know, and find the truth for it. So I'm gonna give you a simple example. Mm -hmm. For example, you may hear over and constantly it's saying to you that you're mm -hmm. ugly. Mm -hmm. But the truth is. He said you're fearfully and wonderfully okay. made. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always try to tell people like whatever that. the feeling is, find the truth that dispels it. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if it doesn't line up with what has been spoken over your life, what right. God says that you are, who God mm -hmm. says that you are. Yeah. So definitely, as you go through the process, I would say know that you're not alone mm -hmm. and make sure that you always have the truth over what you feel because your feelings mm -hmm. aren't mm -hmm. always true no, you can't not. rely on no, them you know them. it's not always true them. so that definitely i will leave Absolutely. that with people listen to me and that's one of the reasons why and i was telling my listeners this before the show i said um the beginning of this year if you all remember the story of the lady that took her life at, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. at a hotel mm -hmm. and um i didn't get once again this is i things which all type of topics and ideas was coming on me and it was heavy on me mm -hmm. because i'm like i have to get this i have to i have to let people know i wasn't even a, approved for the show as yet and i said i got it. i have to talk about suicide yeah. and suicidal thoughts and how i could thought how can i get how can i help at least one woman right to change her mind from going to this particular place to to get you know destroy mm -hmm. her life mm -hmm. or how can i get someone to to be encouraged to go and seek help at some point mm -hmm. and i am so grateful that i am now speaking about this vision that I saw a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. you know, um, just Yay. so that we can help someone out. So we yeah. can help persons. And so ladies, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for your advice. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for being so courageous. Thank you. Because I know that someone somewhere was able to, wow, this is long. I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. Y'all get me some glasses. <laughs> That's a reality checker mm -hmm. that women experience such demeaning thoughts, much of which are caused or propelled by the disparaging actions and words of others. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. Dear women, you're fearfully and wonderfully yes. made by God. Mm -hmm. I never wish for you to feel less than, especially because you are more than enough. Your God-given strength and nurturing ability is far beyond any other. You're loved and appreciated and great. That I love is some um, good yes. encouragement. Thank you so nice. much for sharing that. Y'all know that, man, but sometimes we just have to say yes. it. Yes. All right. Yes. You have to say it. You know, you we're going through reminder. some things. And as women, we go through things, mm -hmm. oh, you know. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is don't keep it in. Yeah. yeah. Don't be silent yeah. about it. Yeah. Go and tell somebody. Yes. It's okay if you make I don't care how you feel, like you said, truth over, mm -hmm. over feelings. Mm -hmm. And truth over feelings. I can also add to that and say, you go and seek. I need who help. Who knows yeah. the truth? Mm -hmm. Who can tell you? Yeah. I know mm -hmm. you and say, okay, this is what the issue is. Let me help you out. Let me help mm -hmm. you. Because right? if you had it, I'm not saying that God can't do things on His own. Yeah. Right? But He allows institutions and yeah. doctors and stuff to be present. He so uses that you can people. Go. Mm -hmm. He used the people to go to this institution yeah. to feel better, to get what you mm -hmm. need, mm -hmm. to come back and be productive here yeah. on this earth, mm -hmm. especially here in Nassau. We need you here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. To these beautiful women, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, you so for having, having me. Thank, Thank you. you. And we're gonna have, I don't know, it's gonna be going to break because we gotta we have the doctor in the house. <laughs> <laughs> we have Dr. Gia Jones right after this break. We'll have her on. I know when I saw the fly, I was like. Who's coming? She's on me. I was like, could I ask? She's like, oh, yeah. I was like, okay, come. Let me see again, Madison. Let me see. Look, look like this way. Your nose. My nose. 
listen to my Facebook friends. Y'all know good and well. My nose and my forehead look like I'm frying chicken. Y'all gotta tell me, man. Oh my god. Oh, good so we're gonna break your off. So I'm just Never going to no, he's gonna be soft. Touch up. She, touch up. Oh, Dylan. Dylan. She's gonna be soft. Yeah, I guess. Um, um, okay, ladies, remember we're live. So they can hear you from the mic. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Show, right? Let me get the two the table talk first. Okay. She's at the end. Oh, it might make look familiar. Oh, oh, oh. Her. A lot of people I was just reading that. Not reading that. Okay. All right. Okay. My necklace says something. Oh, I am first time will be giving you prizes just for shipping them out. Call us at 377 450 or visit us on Facebook at Ship Airborne. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Okay, so y'all could, as y'all head out, let me see. Y'all should know how to get to come back out to any Yeah. No, I don't know. Okay, listen into the radio, please. Yes, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. She said right there, get a better shot for this. How are you doing? Hi. Family Medicine Center, where our family takes care of you. When I think of summer, I think of family. When I think of Cali, I think it's been so good. And then I think of more. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, no, it's saying it's the show so far has been so good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
brave, courageous women on. Um, just before our break, uh, Madison and Tanisha, thank you so much for joining us once again. And who do we have in the building? Dr. Gia Jones. Okay, Dr. Gia is an applied social psychologist and trained mental health professional. You know, I can't come half step and when I come, I have to come correct. Her primary work is for a philanthropic grant-making organization based here in Nassau. At her core, Dr. Gia is passionate about service and healthy communities, and as such, she serves as the pastor of health at Legacy Church Global, provides therapy in her private practice, the Safe Space Counseling Center, is the podcast host of Dr. Gia Says, which is Dr. Jean's job, and is co-founder of a nonprofit with a mission of mental health, health, and wellness. Welcome, Dr. Gia. Thank you, Coach Trish. Okay, how are you doing? I'm good. I am good. That's good. Um, I read your WhatsApp, your message. You said that you were tuning in while you were on the radio. I mean, while you were in the car. Yes. You know how I feel about that. But I know. Anyway, I know. No I, police officer. I know. Okay. I know. And as I sat there, I was like, you go around me. But okay. it was good. And okay. I was like, if I came, I it was going to be in a space. Something? And I would okay, miss it and you. everything. Yes. Okay, I get yes. you. That's but, one and last time and I was checking my mirrors mm -hmm. and I checked my mirrors before I got out the car okay. to make sure nobody was standing God. there or whatever. Okay. You know, so this yeah. is what happens when you have a wife of a police officer. You get to be more, yeah, yeah you got to be and cognizant then, of everything that's happening. For me, it's living away. Okay. It was living away by myself. Okay, see, and then I, I learned you know. all of these things that all we right. take for granted living here where we yeah. know everybody and it's small. Yeah, no, no, yeah. don't take them for granted. So, yeah. You you heard what Madison was saying and what Tanisha was saying and you yeah. know the the issues that they encounter and I'm sure that there are so many other women out there that have, that have experienced the same thing, um, and I want to ask you as of late because of what it is that you do, mm -hmm. what seems to be the core reason why women come to seek you, as wow. far as mental health is concerned? I will say it's childhood trauma. It is having some experience early on in life and. Mm -hmm they have managed to manage uh, for the majority of their life, but realizing now as an adult that they want more, that the cycles that they're stuck in, mm -hmm. that the anxiety that they've learned to live with, that the depression that has gone in mass, um, and you know, finding these very interesting ways to cope just isn't cutting it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all talked a bit about stigma and the challenge with help seeking here, and it is, it is something that is more acceptable. You still will get side eyes. People still won't take you seriously. People will talk a good talk. So I can't tell you how much times people are like, girl, so good what you do, even with um, Stories of Hope, my nonprofit, mm -hmm. um, offering you know sessions and opportunities. I get all of the pats on the back and all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you offer a workshop and nobody show up. And it's free. Oh, oh no. It's it free. Like, And you're like, but what happened? And you know what, what? What does happen is it sounds good to say, okay, oh, that sounds good that you're gonna get help, but nobody does. So, mm -hmm. I do think that there is a movement amongst um, people in general. Mm -hmm. I do have more women than men in my practice, but I do get men on occasion, mm -hmm. um, where it's like, what has been ain't enough anymore, and so I need to do something different. Mm -hmm. And I know people have been saying that therapy thing is for crazy people, but Clearly, something still ain't right, but me that it's important enough that I'm going to push past it and give it a try. Mm -hmm. And and they're doing it. And yeah, childhood trauma, um, early early experiences that just never got resolved. Wow, wow. So okay, so you've never had anyone who actually came to you and confessed that they're having suicidal thoughts? <laughs> oh yeah, but so let me let me just say so because my you y'all heard everything she read about in my bio, so. I do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I do is um, I am very careful about who I take on as clients. Right. Um, I can get referrals from psychiatrists, but uh, if the person requires more um, intense care, more regular care, very similar to what the ladies here described, mm -hmm. I would not be the best therapist for them mm -hmm. because I can't be on demand. Um, my sessions are going to be maybe twice a month. I may be able to squeeze you in after work uh, on a day or something like mm -hmm. that. But um, my, I'm going to be quick to refer you to one of my colleagues who is in a full time who can provide it. So with that said, have I had people, um, in that seat who have said, I want to die or I have attempted to? Yes. Mm -hmm. But, um, I do try to identify if there's any suicidal ideation 
and an ideation is one thing actually attempting and having attempted and continuously attempting is a completely other thing because as the ladies describe that usually then requires inpatient where right. you can be monitored where medication can um you can give yourself some time for the medication to to work and then you have this time to like feel a quote unquote feel a little better and mm -hmm. then really do some of the work with the talk therapy mm -hmm. um so what do you think are some of the factors that affect women's mental health <laughs> So I, I wasn't sure if it was Tanisha or if it was Madison, mm -hmm. but somebody said that um, I'm the strong one. Everybody That's knows Tanisha. Me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, not surprised. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so um, being the strong one is who we as women of color have been raised mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. We have been raised to be the, you take a licking and you keep ticking. Mm -hmm. There's no time. To, to cry, you, you may cry when you shower, but that shower still need to be the 2.5 seconds that mm -hmm. it need to be mm -hmm. because you need to get back out there and you gotta hustle, you gotta get the children ready. Mm -hmm. If there's somebody in the house that's a partner for you, spouse or otherwise, you gotta make sure that's straight. Mm -hmm. You gotta um, go and do whatever it is you need to do mm -hmm. to make sure everything is done. So why are you sitting now crying? Mm -hmm. why, why are you wasting all that time? Mm -hmm. You know, like, no, 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 no. So I think that, that more than anything else is the toxicity that continues to erode our mental health as women. This, mm. this, this position that strength is being everything all the time to everyone. To everyone. Yeah. You gotta constantly be on. Um, and if you're not, it's almost kind of like you're not even, you're not like a good woman. If you can just like take it and then like pitch back up and, and keep going. Um, you know, and and some of it I know is our own response to the the narrative around women being soft and mushy and needy, yeah. and so it's like, well, no, anybody gonna call me needy, anybody gonna call me yeah. emotional or mm -hmm. whatever. No, you gonna see what it is. And the other side of it is because we have had such um, the homes have been just if not balanced mm -hmm. as they should be, and so women have had to step in 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 ways that they may not necessarily need to. Y'all were talking about. Um, comparing, I guess, Madison's experience with a single mother and how right. a single mother can do it. And so when you are a single mother um, and you may not have that village around mm -hmm. you, you may not have mommy or mother or mm -hmm. somebody That's like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, then what, what do you do? You better keep going. You better you make it work. You better exactly. make it work. Because you could be judged if the child ain't thriving or if the house ain't clean or if all of those things. So, yeah. What I'm going to see. Um, so let me ask you that because women who may want to keep who want to suffer in silence and i don't want to and i don't want to say it like as if it's something yeah but i can understand their reason mm -hmm. but let's say for us as you know we have our colleagues our co-workers our neighbors our aunties cousins etc mm -hmm. what are some signs that we can look into if we are careful enough to be more observant what are some things that may not be um as what's the word i want to use as Help me, Mangia. It may not be as visible to the mm -hmm. naked eye. It's obvious, yeah. yeah. It's not as obvious. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's funny, as I, I was giving a talk yesterday and responding to similar questions for mm -hmm. a group of young girls. These mm -hmm. were, I think, high schoolers and maybe early college, but maybe high schoolers. And I said, you know, one of the important things is when you are in relationship with people is no. Mm -hmm. And the important part of having girlfriends in, in your village who who can see through you. So if you say, I okay, and you keep keep, mm -hmm. but you know, you ain't okay. Mm -hmm. And so that girl could, you know, that friend could look at you and be like, something ain't right. Can't move yeah. uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now what's the true truth? Right. right. Mm -hmm. We could talk about it now, mm -hmm. or we could wait until we go there. Cause maybe some people here, who yeah, yeah. and you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, because it really does, it is, it is in the behavioral changes. So sleeping too much mm -hmm. or not sleeping at all. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the questions that I start with, with, with people that I, um, in therapy, when, you know, they are different points in their, their journey. It's like, okay, before we get started, how's your sleeping, sleeping too much, sleeping too little. How's your eating, right. eating too much, eating too little. Um, what's your energy and your, and your mood? Um, can you get yourself up out of the bed to mm -hmm. bathe? Because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we take that for granted that it's like, okay, you know, I get up and I, I go and I bathe. Like, that's that's what we do, especially mm -hmm. in this country. We let you bathe in the morning, you bathe in the night. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was it was Tanisha who was talking when she was like, she did not even she have did. the strength to mm -hmm. even do that. And so mm -hmm. you'll, you'll talk to people and they'll be like, I just, I, I just ain't it. I really feel it like that, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I could be okay or, you know, mm -hmm. but you, you've got to push past that. So it is really knowing people and then being able to call them out. Um, but you, in order to call out somebody and you have to 
relationship to yeah. Because you can't let a stranger. A stranger could be like, who are you talking to and yeah, why? Leave me alone. Roll you out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you it, it is building relationships. It is um and that's why that village, having girlfriends, having um, you know, even work colleagues and family members mm-hmm. that know you well enough that could say something ain't right. Mm-hmm. I see you smiling, but it ain't going straight to your eyes. I hear you laugh, but it ain't have the snort that it normally does when you're laughing, you know, really, really good. And so something ain't right, let's talk. Yeah. And if you can't talk to me, who are you talking to? Because right. sometimes you may not be the person and you have to be okay with that, yeah. but at least let them find somebody else, take them to somebody else, walk with them with it. Now, what would you find to be one of the most, I know, according to, um, what was it, Statistics National Alliance? Let's see, it was the National Alliance on Mental Illness okay. that said that depression is the most commonly diagnosed mental illness of women. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if that also applies here with us in um, the Bahamas at yeah. large. Yeah. Is that, I would think it's anxiety. You know, I would go with you and say that it's anxiety, but I also know one, we don't do enough diagnosing. Right. Um, and we don't do enough diagnosing because mm-hmm. people don't present as much. Mm-hmm. Um, and then two, the patterns and the, the experiences kind of changes things. And then, so basically I think we have a lot of people who are walking around functionally depressed. Oh, oh yeah. But they ain't going nowhere because nobody can call them crazy. Um, so we can't even, we can't even say we have some statistics or some records, some information, some data, no, nothing because they're not going to go in and present no. as you've stated. No. And I think we are gonna, so going back to the anxiety thing, why the anxiety may show up a little more than depression. I think we may be okay with admitting that I, I have a little nerves yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. feel a little anxious or I don't feel okay about that, you know, cause I, I think it's, it's, it's almost normal for us to worry to an extent, right. um, and to be worriers. And so, um, we may not even realize the extent that that has moved into maybe mm-hmm. something like a generalized anxiety disorder or something along those mm-hmm. lines. Um, but the depression though, again, just goes masked as stressed out, as busy, as any number of, um, life challenges that mm-hmm. um we just got to keep pushing we have to keep pushing three two eight eight one six four ladies three two eight eight one six four if you want to share something if you're going through something if you want to just ask a question to dr jones um it's open the line is open and let me be honest with you one of the reasons why i decided not to record this particular show is because i just felt as if it was someone who really needed to hear us live Mm -hmm. for some reason. Um, So if you want to, even if you don't want us to put you on air, but if you want to call just for a couple seconds, when we take our break, 328-8164 to speak to Dr. Gia, um, I'm opening the lines for you to do just that. So Dr. Gia, I mean, how how do we get to the point where persons have to take medication for anxiety though? Uh, I have an aunt and I'm not making joke or fun or hard or anything but um i'm sorry <laughs> the way that it said for my other aunt she'd be, she'd be like let's say her name is betsy that's mm-hmm. not her name betsy you bring your anxiety pills today mm-hmm. you know so, <laughs> so betsy can't come we can't have no family function we can't go off the island or nothing until betsy brings her anxiety pills so how did it get to the point where you actually have to take medication for anxiety? I thought anxiety is something like, hey, okay, you just call me nurse girl. Let me go drink something. Let me go watch a movie and then everything will be finished. Right. So, you know, you could take meds or you could take meds because, mm-hmm. you know, in this country, the way that we deal with our meds is usually by having a drink or two or mm-hmm. 10. Or 10. Um, mm-hmm. And and again, going back to why so many people are undiagnosed is because we have these things that are so culturally normal for us Mm -hmm. as ways to cope without us even realizing that that's the way to cope. Mm So, you know, you come home and, um, you know, you always have a glass of wine or you always go to happy. There's a happy hour Mm -hmm. after work every single day, not just on Fridays. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's an everyday thing that you do, or you just hang out before you go home or something like that. Women and men, I mean, men definitely have that experience Mm -hmm. more than women Mm because most times we have to rush home to be with the kids, but you know, there's still ways that we, we cope that, um, probably substitutes for what um, the medication can do. But mm-hmm. how do you get to the place where you need medication? Well, <laughs> you just not talking about it, 
not dealing with it, mm -hmm. letting it sit for a while um, and getting to the place where you need medication. Let me say this. It does not even have to be extreme. It could just be compounded stress. Uh, one of your speakers, I'm not sure even which one it was, who mentioned that where it's like when there is life upon life uh -huh. upon life, uh -huh. when that happens and that hits you and there's nothing, it's just too much happening for any kind of, okay, let's just woo side out. Let's yeah, just yeah, go yeah. get a drink. Yeah. Let's just go sit on the beach. No, you need something that's going to help activate um, those um, the, the the blood and the neurotransmitters and such like that mm -hmm. so that you can get a bit of calm so that you can process mm -hmm. um, to be able to actually process and think. And so that's where it is. So, and being on meds doesn't mean that you have to be on it for forever. Mm -hmm. You can have it so that when you are in high stress situations that it's more helpful for you. So there are a number of situations where medication would be helpful and then there are a number of situations where it's necessary um and don't confuse the two and don't also don't diminish the value of it you right. know um it is cute when you know like like that the running joke in mm -hmm. families like that but i you know it's like but it's real it's real yeah. i mean just like how the person who has asthma has to walk around with the yeah. inhaler yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i mean if you have if if you have anxiety to the point where you you know it you're you're very nervous and it causes you to get into a panic really quickly or you cannot you know do what is needed to be done because the anxious thoughts are taken over then the medication will happen and take the medication mm -hmm. that's better than sitting at home because you're so scared to come outside yeah yeah listen i have i'm not going to say because tony might know who i'm referring to but there's a colleague that i have right I mean, she's scared of everything. She's scared of every, man, I scared. Everything, and she's scared. She said one time in our meeting, um, we had a meeting, and she said, when she looked at her, her, her shadow, so she said, hey, you know, it was, so she just scared of everything. And so is that a form of anxiety? And is this something to the point where, um, you know, she needs medication or she says, hey, girl, just relax. Um, I think that one may just be girl, relax. Yeah. But I also would ask, uh, what else is happening? I, mm -hmm. you know, so therapist add on. I, I have some questions that I would mm -hmm. want to explore before I say, "Girl, just relax." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more to that question. Yeah. Okay. Can we do it outside of here? Or is it a private? This person wants to speak private. Ask, okay. Let's open it live so that the Facebook persons can hear as well. Hello and welcome to your lane. Hi. Good day. Good day. How may I help? I was just fine. I was listening to the radio and I heard just so Um. I just want to know, like, you know, the pandemic is well, it's still going on. Um, there's a lot of young children that are suffering, like, mentally, and they don't know how to do this. Is there, like, um, resources or places that young people go to when they speak to somebody? Um, because I had my teen daughter that she was going through a lot of stuff, like, mentally, and I was unable to help her. But I talked to her, and so they ran blood work, and they did all kinds of things. So um, I obviously don't know the details of your um, daughter's situation, but I will say one thing. If the peop the public hospitals authority <laughs> is oversubscribed, mm -hmm. so if they were going, if they were recommending that she be admitted to the adolescent unit at Sandalands, then I am going to go on a limb and say that she probably needed it. She may have needed more than just going into somebody to talk to at this stage. So what it may have meant is that she was there for maybe three days a week um, where they do a number of assessments to kind of really understand what's happening, ensure, uh, you know, that there isn't any kind of suicidal behavior happening because um, people are very good at hiding yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um and just making sure that um, even probably starting her up on some medication and being able to monitor her and her response and reaction to the medication. So I wouldn't necessarily say that it wasn't a good option, um, but 
as a mom, you get to choose. And so beyond that, then the the other option would be Community Counseling and Assessment Center. We call it CCAC. It is on Collins Avenue, uh, and it is um, it is one of the public hospitals um, offerings. And so it is not inpatient like Sandilands. And so you can access counseling. Uh, and beyond that, everything else I think at this point is paid. Um, but there are resources. There are therapists like myself. I don't personally deal with youth. Like um, I don't offer therapy for youth, but I have colleagues who do. Um, and so if somebody gets in contact with me um, and they are looking for somebody 18, 16, 15, 12, 10, 8, 7, whatever, um, then I've got some I've got some very, very talented and skilled colleagues and friends who I can say, okay, hey, you can you can reach out to them um, and they can um, kind of do the assessment and see if it's a good fit for them to see your, your child. So, mm-hmm. but I think one of the, one of the biggest challenges, and I know we do it all the time. We do it when we go to the medical doctors too. They tell us you need to go on pressure pills. And you say, I ain't getting on no pressure pills because mm-hmm. pressure pills is this, this, this. And my Grammy tell me don't ever do it when you may actually, actually really need to do it. And so it's the same thing with mental health. Um, mm-hmm. When, when somebody says, okay, maybe you should consider this or we would recommend that before you're quick to jump on that, that sounds so extreme or it ain't all of that or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, be open to the, you may not fully understand what's happening. And so if this person is making that recommendation, ask more questions. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I am also not saying just jump on the first thing the doctor says, but ask more questions. Can you help me understand why that would be best? What are alternatives? What happens then? How long are you suggesting it for? Um, what other options uh, are there? Um, you know, is there a place mm-hmm. that I can get a second opinion? Mm-hmm. Um, those are the kinds of things right. that I would say, if it doesn't sit well with you, mm-hmm. the first thing that you hear then um, to definitely to, to go on. But um, our kids, as she said, um, I am incredibly concerned because parents are depressed um, and not just depressed emotionally, but financially depressed. Mm-hmm. Um, and so kids are lacking some of the stimulation and engagement and and all that would have, would have, Mm -hmm. they would have received if parents were more, you know, were more stable and feeling better. And so no doubt they're feeling that, um, and their feelings are just as real and as true and as impactful Mm -hmm. and as harmful, Mm -hmm. um, or could be harmful as adults. So basically we're telling our caller that, Hey, just give it a shot or perhaps go back there and ask ask more questions. questions, Yeah. Um, so, you know, or like as she's doing now, she's asking for a Mm -hmm. second opinion. She's actually asking you what you think she should do. We can't give advice over the, over the phone. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, we can't do that. But, and then, like I said, there's also CCAC. So on that's on Collins Avenue. I think the way that you get an appointment there is that you call or you show up. So that's also an option as well. Thank you so much, Carla. Uh, do you have any other questions before we go? Um, I will be on. Thank you yeah. so much. Thanks for calling. All right. So, Tia, yeah, I'm going to put you on the spot, right? But that's something that I like to do. Uh huh. So I'm going to ask you, no, but seriously, I'm going to ask you this question. Was there ever a point in your life where you've experienced any mental illness? Or- oh, yeah, yeah, girl. I have no shame about that. Okay. I have me a therapist. Mm. The therapist as a therapist because I can't. Well, let's let's go back. The therapist is also a wife, a mom of two. I also work at a full-time job where mm-hmm. I have tons of responsibility. I am a leader, so I've got responsibility for health in church. Yeah. So I've got ministry and a whole team um, underneath me. Uh, what else I missing? <laughs> you know, the, the podcast, the this, the that, the that. So look hello yeah uh, hi okay it it, it it is be rough in these streets sometimes so um when i wrote my book the strong one mm-hmm. um it was my journal because i was depleted i mm-hmm. was i was feeling bitter mm-hmm. and i was finding that the things that normally gave me joy no longer did and wow. so i had started the journaling and the journaling turned into a book and then i said okay well this is the book and this is how i'm gonna get my life back and then what did i do I added the book, I added author to my rules. Mm-hmm. And then I burnt myself out again, pu- pushing the book and doing everything. So then 2020, I started therapy. Um, and it was the first time I'd done it in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also have a good group of friends. Um, many of them also have masters in, in counseling. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, I can glean yeah, a little bit yeah, from them, yeah. um, even though I ain't supposed to, but nonetheless. <laughs> um, and so I started therapy for a little bit in 2020. And that was enough to kind of get me going. I added some exercise to my regiment. Mm-hmm. And then I realized this year that I wanted to do it more consistently. Mm-hmm. Well, that, yeah, earlier this year. Um, and so now I have my regular therapist that I go to. So for me, 
what happened was COVID and a number of other things actually caused me to develop anxiety. And wow. so I started experiencing the same things that I would identify and diagnose some people. And I was like, yeah. hold on. Yeah, like I literally, yeah. <laughs> I woke up, I woke up with heart racing and I was like, what, uh, this, oh, this, yeah. this is anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so, um, yeah, we, you're human. Of course. You are going to have some experience. And I think when you aren't able to admit that is when you are at the place that it's most dangerous. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem when you can't really face the fact that, yeah. yes, you have a problem. Yeah. There is a problem. Yeah. And the next problem, of course, is not being able to share it with someone. Yeah. Read your shirt for me. Uh, you came in and okay. it says... So read it because I can't see, let me see it. Let me see. Can the camera pick it up? Oh, I think this is the camera right here. It says, I am mother. And then that crosses out. I am wife. That crosses out. I am CEO. I am minister. That crosses out. I am strong one. That crosses out. I am enough. You know. And, and I love that because that is another reason why as you've stated we have anxiety as women because oh, yeah. we try to play so many different roles all we these have roles so many different hats mm -hmm. we the minister mm -hmm. we the elder we the prophetess the PTA, this, the, the, the 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 oh, don't even add this child i need to talk about that all these different things gym moms, and, moms. and then you, you you burn out and you feel like you can't do it no more you just yeah. want to shut down um and so whew, there's a lot going on Gia. there's a lot going mm -hmm. on with us as women because we have so much to do yeah there's so many titles, there's so many roles. Yeah. Um, let's talk to this woman who, I'm, I'm, well, two women, I'm put them in categories. Yeah. The first one, um, she knows she needs help, mm -hmm. but she's afraid or embarrassed to reach out. Okay. And then the second woman, she knows she needs help, but her finances may not be able to accommodate the cost of seeing a therapist. Okay. Because y'all expensive. Yeah, child. So y'all expenses. <laughs> Y'all expensive. <laughs> Just a little couple so, dollars. <laughs> but it's worth it. Because um, like, um, who the was who said it now? Now, I have to remember who said that. Right. She said, no, it wasn't Madison. Tanisha. It was Tanisha that said, um, I, I already lost my, my trend already. She said something about we need other people or we need. I lost my trend. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, it happens. Okay. okay so back um, when, I, when I remember again, I'll come back to the two women. Right. Like okay. these women. So the first one is, um, I need help, mm -hmm. and, but I'm afraid. Okay. And then the second one is, I need help, but it's expensive. How can we help these women? How can we help them? So the first one, I need help, but I'm afraid. I would say start with somebody who you can trust. And I, I start there because if you can get the person who you trust, even if it's just one person who you trust, and you can say to them, look, I to get more help and i'm thinking about going to a therapist um that person can support that journey with mm -hmm. you so they can do the check-ins they can um you know help you in, in ways you know make you make you feel like you're not crazy because you're not mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um and i would say start there let them even if they have to be the one to make the calls and, and it's interesting because i from time to time i have people and sometimes I do come off a little hard mm -hmm. with this, but I'll have people who be like, I call in um, because my friend or cousin or niece or so-and-so need help. Mm -hmm. And I always like, well, why the person ain't calling? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I one of the things that I do is I allow them to talk because I realize that they're being an advocate. And that's important to yeah. every one of our journeys, yeah. right? To have somebody who's in our village supporting you. And then I say, but okay, now, the one thing I just need to say to you is if therapy is ever going to work, the person has to want it themselves. Absolutely. And so then the next thing is I can say to them, these are my rates. This is when I'm available. This is how you can book me. Mm -hmm. But before we do any of that, can you let so-and-so, can you let Sue, can you let Kadisha, can you whatever, whoever it is, can you let them call me first, please? Mm -hmm. Ain't no cost to it. Just can you could, they could even WhatsApp me. If it's too, if it's too much to even do a WhatsApp call, we can even just do WhatsApp um, messaging right. and I'm fine with that just mm -hmm. to get the conversation going. Um, but I would also say to that woman, what is scarier continuing in the way that you are now and knowing mm -hmm. that you may be getting more and more depleted mm -hmm. or taking a risk and something that may cause you to find healing that you so need. 
We're going to take a quick break. So before we take a break, because child, I remember, I remember what I wanted to say. Let me hurry up say this before I forget it again. So Tanisha said, every person needs someone. Every person, just like how we can invest in, um, uh, um, what do you call it? The, the doctor. Yeah. When our cars yeah. aren't working and stuff, we look for a mechanic. When our teeth needs whatever fixing, fixing dentist. or dentist, whatever we use them. And so that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Look, you don't have the funds at the moment, but let's try to at least try to invest in it a little bit. Save up a little one or two dogs because you can need it. You're going mm -hmm. to need it. Um, and then before we go on this break too, I'm going to ask: Are there any free clinics? Um, beyond CCAC um, and the clinics, I don't think so. Um, the family, which was operating uh, Dr. David Allen, the Renaissance Center, mm -hmm. they had a, a group called the family or groups called the family. It was, um, I think, kind of like AA, mm -hmm. um, which is not true group therapy, but still functions within the space of group therapy, which mm -hmm. tends to be incredibly helpful because mm -hmm. you get to hear and see people who sound just, just like, like you. you. Yeah. So you know, and I think it was Tanisha who said it, or maybe it was Madison, mm -hmm. you know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. so that's usually one of the biggest things with us when we mm -hmm. when we get in our brokennesses. It feels like I am the only person going out here through who this. feels like this, yeah. going through this. Yeah. And you're not. You yeah. really aren't. Let's take a break, Jay. We're going to get back to okay. this. Good day, everyone. Fred and Cargo Services. So I'm one of um, hey, listen, someone said, I, I love that shirt. I'm so going to need one of them. Someone else says, I need a shirt extra small, please. So Gia, you did this yourself? No, child. Coach Keish did this. Um, Shakisha Johnson? No, Shakisha. I know, but what did she No, Tell me about a, a bit about her. Because nice. we looking for people to come on the show. Oh, yeah. And if you like her and she, yes. Okay, so let's go. Yes, yes, let's yes, yes. What yes. she do? Um, so Keisha is um, a women's um, healing. Get her on. Yeah. Gia. Okay. Let's get her on. Her. Women's healing. Yeah, because I was supposed to say, I say before I leave, like, I have to say the same, my idea. That's she, all right. I she, don't um, mind that. She gave this to me. Because I want one of those as well. Yeah, like, guys, I read this on the airplane, but the, the flight attendant was like, I want that shirt. Okay. Come, give it a shirt, please. Black Coach, Coach Keish. Yes. Shakisha Johnson. Yes. Hello and thank you, Shakisha Johnson. We got to get you um, on the show. And most importantly, we need to get your shirt. Thank you. Um. Oh, okay, so I'll just wrap up on that. I'll give you a minute to talk. Wrap up. And, uh, okay, don't take to so just answer the one about the woman who doesn't have any money. What do you want to answer that? Because you don't have any. Um, yeah, but I was also going to, so I also want to say to just call and ask because I have done, like, somebody called to me and they said, this is not my hat. Go right ahead. Yeah. yeah. And I find, even if they just say, if I could afford $50, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta invest, right? Yeah, at some point. Yeah. And then the thing is, if they don't, they're not gonna take it back. They're not gonna be held accountable. I always start with my coaching. Yeah. So if I give them pro bono, yeah. be, okay, you have a certain time to be back here. They come five minutes late, ten minutes late. They know when they have to pay. Yes. They come before you. Yes. So yes, yeah. That's true. Josh, heels and accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, Josh is going to a how y'all doing out there? I'm wondering if I should listen. Naughty will not. He will be very upset with me if I only gave away two tickets. I need to give away these other two tickets today. So, what I'm going to do? I, you got a call now for the. I'm giving y'all the privilege, my listener, my um, Facebook audience, to call in. And please do this for me, Matt. Tell me, well, you have a choice. You can tell me what mental health, why is mental health so important to you? Or you can say, okay, I'm looking in the mirror, Trish. And when I look in the mirror, this is what I see. All right. I'm giving you a chance to win those La Fest tickets so that you can get those endorphins moving and kicking to help with whatever anxiety, depression, whatever it is that you may be facing. Or you just need a break, a break from the children, a break from hubby. I don't know anything. The number is 328-8164. Tony, see, I remember that number. 328-8164 to my Facebook watchers, listeners, viewers, 
This is before I go on air now, so I'm giving y'all a chance. And for goodness sake, don't let the man call. Please don't let the man call before y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. Okay. I'm going to put them on it. How, how much more time do you have left? Um, okay, so we'll put them on. Can they hear? Can the Facebook audience hear? Because I don't really have to put them on the air. The person can hear if we just go to the studio. Do you want to do that or do you want to wait till we go on air? Do you want to do it now or wait till we go on air? Okay. I thought that's what you were saying just now. Okay, yeah. You're listening to Your Lane with Coach Trish Hanna. Welcome back. We have with us in studio, for those who are just tuning in, Dr. Gia Jones. And she was about to tell us or talk to us about those who may be experiencing some type of me mental illness. I don't want to say that like that mental yeah, illness, but it is what it is. Yeah, but I, mean, I, don't want, I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, I am, you know. Yeah. So the other thing, too, is it's and I like to say emo mental and emotional challenges because like it's that. like, you know, it's not only just the diagnosable um, mental illness. Mm -hmm. it, it is the wide spectrum mm -hmm. of things that just stress yeah you stressed out yeah you, you may need you may need to talk to, to a talk professional to yeah, right. i love it that sounds yeah. better yeah and so if you don't have the funds um you know i said we don't really have that many options but also i would never tell you to not call that right. was too that was redundant but you get just make the call and ask because you may have insurance yeah and insurance may um subsidize x amount of the cost and right. so you need to do your copay right i will take clients and if you call me and you serious especially if we've had this conversation and you say oh well you know i only have 70 dollars yeah. i'll say well look at the less obsession for 70 dollars listen to me y'all take advantage of, I, yeah i have 70 dollars you'll be able to help me please because <laughs> you're next expenses Love. no I'm, I'm kidding no you have to invest in it even if you just just to speak to someone mm -hmm. you know a professional person mm -hmm. i'm i'm about to call you anyway for tomorrow i don't have any mental challenges at the moment but just to have someone to speak to i think on the professional sometimes. level sometimes yeah. you just need that just gotta talk to people you sometimes. know yeah. um but yeah so so tell us how we can reach you here oh yeah so um on all the social platforms at dr gia jones um that's facebook and instagram y'all will see that ain't much have been posting because i've been mia for my mental health because oh. this year has been a lot mm -hmm. um but i still i have the accounts open so that if people still need to reach me mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. Um, I am about to go on vacation, so I am kind of like not necessarily taking new clients, but I've got, again, I am always happy to refer. I'm not one of those people who in this to compete. I in this to get people healed. Okay. Like I, I believe. We're in this together. So I, I believe so deeply in that, that the work that we do as healers um, are helpful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you can Dr. Gia Jones. Dr. Gia Jones. Facebook and Instagram. Um, 424-8777 is my phone contact. Email Dr. Gia at giovannajones.com. Mm -hmm. Now I only have two minutes left, but in that two minutes, I wanted to talk to my audience. You know, every show I try to get some type of challenge um, to give you some type of challenge before we leave. And one of the challenges that I want to give us as women is one, we have to protect our peace. Um, yes. We have to guard our hearts. We got to guard our minds, and this is including this includes being mindful of the things that we watch and listen to. When you wake up in the morning, don't let the first thing be CNN for goodness' sake. Okay, don't let the first thing be just news, bad news, hearing bad things all the time. But those who are believers, we know after we've already done our devotion, see, we can tune in. I think YouTube has has lots of motivational songs and motivational speakers, some um, a lot of different things that you can actually play as you are affirmations that are played in my 
house in the mornings. As you get ready for work, try to say, you know, no to all these negative things sometimes and then give your mind a break. Another thing I wanted to say, let's set boundaries. Know when to say no. Anxiety comes in most cases when we're just saying yes to everything and we're putting on all these hats. Some that we can actually say no to. Say it again. Though. Okay? Say it again. Say, it again. say no. Set your boundaries. And no is a complete no. sentence. No. Full stop. Period. Period. All right. When you have your church and uh, the, listen, the people who from the church and people who from your workplaces, when they come to you sometimes, it's not because they think that you're always efficient and you have it all together. Mm -hmm. That's because everyone else around them saying no. So they come into you because you're the yes person. Say Hi. no. Sorry. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I wanted to say, money causes and with the lack of money causes anxiety. We know good and well as women. Around this time, this is the time for back to school. We start to get pressured. We start to get depressed because we don't have the finances to take care of our children's school supplies, their uniforms, etc. Can I help you a little bit by saying, hey, let's try starting today. Let's challenge ourselves to find a bank. I think National Workers Cooperative Credit Union does this. They have like little savings accounts where you can put funds in $10, $20 every week up until the time that you could set a year as to when oh, you nice. want to take it out. Okay. So, because I don't really 100% trust the AC people, but that's just me. We ain't going there. Because I mean, God forbid, you, they on the road coming to give you the money and then next, you know, something happened. I ain't on the run. I, that that will cost what, sto what story they could tell you. Okay. Oh. So try National Workers, call them in the morning, tell them church sent you, all right? And say, look, I want to save something. I want to put a little $10 in there. So next year around this time, you don't got to worry about having to, not having the funds for the children's school fee and the school books and stuff. And for those, this is very, I know I'm very limited on time, but I want to speak to those who have been broken, who have, have been, hearts have been broken. Can I tell you that I know how you feel? I've been there. Um, I've had past hurtful experiences of, as women, we all have. But I want you to know that there are greener pastures out there. I want you to just be able to take care of yourself first. He is not the first and he's not going to be the last. You know, things come, things go, people change but you still remain. You have to take care of yourself. You have to take care of your mind. You have to be able to love you and love yourself before anybody else. I mean, that's my song, wear it, but that's the truth. Oh, that's All right, because he could move on. It doesn't make sense you killing yourself because when, if, God forbid, that you desire to, to have those thoughts, he's going to move on to the woman anyway and come to your funeral with her. All right, I don't mean song harsh. Is that too harsh? No. I have to just love you, Auntie Jack. Thanks. All right, come on, let's it's go. True. Let's get it together. While you're in this state, Find some self-development courses, um, read extra books, mm -hmm. um, go on to that hobby that you like doing because that hobby may end up turning into some cash. All right. Take care of yourself. Those who are fighting depression, be determined to see the brighter side of life. Look for those things that are that, that you could be grateful for. Think on the things that are pure and lovely and a good report. All right. And everything give thanks. All right. These are the things that will help. These are the only things. I'm sorry. I don't have the mm -hmm. certification of being a therapist or mm -hmm. being um, a counselor or anything. I'm just a coach, but I'm just giving you word to be honest with you. And that's the truth. And that's the truth. All right. And lastly, my point is for those who know someone who's suffering from depression, be more patient with them. All right. Be a listening ear. Sometimes all they want is for you to listen. They really want you to tell them nothing. No. You know, they just want to say someone is here and they're listening to me yeah. and allow them to speak. Show them love. It is love that will help um, to stir them, yes. you know, and help them. All right. Now, if you need ha need someone to talk to or you wish to share your experience, you can email me at Coach Trish at yourlanelifecoaching.com. Or you could reach out to Dr. Gia. She's the therapist. I'm just a coach. All right. Because more than likely, if you come with something that's severe, I'm going to refer. Right over. Exactly. Because there's only so much I can do. Um, and you can go on to my website if you want a free consultation. It's www.yourlanelifecoaching.com. I, how much time may I have left? My, 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 my producer is giving me the the um stinky eye but producer i can give you five dollars for gas give me one second i want to salute <laughs> ruth exactly i want to salute ruth bernard cunningham before i leave i have to do that she's the founder and director of mother's aid bahamas she helps with giving mothers that are less fortunate and those who find themselves in hard times the essentials needed to care for their newborn and themselves listen we were trying to get her on last week but she was having some technical issues with her phone um her organization also have volunteer nurses and patient caregivers that help overwhelm mothers with their pregnancy journey and postpartum care um she has a 
cookout and fundraiser that's coming up Monday, August 1st to facilitate their back to school giveaway event from 1 p.m. until at Greater Bethel Cathedral located off Blue Hill Road through the corner of Carlton E. Francis, I'm saying too much. Um, you can check out the social accounts, Mother's Aid Bahamas, or give her a call 467-6708 for more information. I will post a flyer because I, I, I have a time. And Tony and taking my $5 gas. So I will post a flyer on your Lane Coaching page. Today's show is brought to you by Johnson & Johnson distributed by Lowe's Wholesale, Airborne Freight and Cargo Services, John Shoe Store and Accessories, Family Medicine Center, National Workers Cooperative Credit Union, Hershey's distributed by Asa H. Pritchard, and La Fest 2022. Next week's topic is entitled From Menstruation to Menopause. Dr. Nina Graham will be with us once again and this time to be more in depth with the things that we need to go and what we go through as women the PMS, the fibroids, the PCOS, all of those things. I had a joke about my hot flashes. I'm going to say it next week, God's willing. So thanks to my guests, Anisha Longley, Madison Corley, and the one and only Dr. Gia Jones, my wonderful producer who I'm giving my $5 gas to at the end of the show. Thanks to my Facebook audience that were keeping the chat lit again. And to our first time listeners and our continued listening audience, I pray that you were empowered, educated, and encouraged today. Until next time, have a blessed evening, everyone. God bless you. Excellent. Whew, that was a lot to hear you all phenomenal. I expected nothing else. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you. You make it easy. Gotcha.